we have this situation in this offseason where two marquee forwards are looking to be, you know, off their teams. Who would you rather have, Jimmy Butler or Paul George? Let's get into hot take or hot ass. We see a take as a hot take or a hot ass take. Uh, we have our guy, B. Souza's guy, Jay Shine Tatum. At the celebratory winning of the championship title, Brian Scalabrini's asking him some questions, and he says, Jason Tatum, how was the last couple of days since winning the championship? Been unreal. Uh, still doesn't seem true, but I'm just trying to stay in the moment, honestly. And you guys uh, jumped on a flight to Miami right off next day? A couple hours after, actually. You, you, you guys have been on some a lot, a lot of trips to Miami, a lot of hard-fought trips to Miami. Was this one a little sweeter taking that trip down? They always easy. <laughs> Me personally, talk about having mm. Me on your mind. How do we feel about this subtle shot to Miami? I didn't even know Boston and Miami had this like rivalry where they needed to be taking shots like this. But, uh, Bissos, how do you feel that even though y'all won a championship, in the back of Jason Tatum's mind is Miami? He got asked a pretty direct question. I mean, bro, <laughs> 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 it's a rivalry. I, I, I like this in the sport. I like people talking shit, even if it's warranted or not. So I'm, I'm a fan of it. I, I like the one that he were talking trash as well. I said it on my uh, Twitter page. I think the the Celtics versus Heat rivalry is probably the only real rivalry in the league that has like a really large wow. sample size. So, I mean, I like it, and I think uh, record wise, when he does go to Miami on the road, like it, it I, I think it was twenty twenty two when the road team won every single game up until maybe even the last game. So they both have like good road records against each other. So, hey, man, you want a chip? He's talking shit. I'm fine with it. Mm, um, I would definitely say hot take. Uh, I agree with Souls. I love it. I love the chippiness. Um, last year, when the Denver Nuggets won the championship and they got on their microphones and did their parades Fuck and they brought up the Lakers, I'm like, ah, this shit feels forced. Like, do we really – do, do y'all really hate us? No, y'all jealous. With the Celtics and Heat? This is genuine animosity. This is genuine hate. And this is the type of pettiness I like. It doesn't yeah. feel corny. It doesn't feel forced. It's legit. It's legit history there in this rivalry. It's not something that just got sprung onto us after one series. Like I, I, I like it. Hot take. Yeah, I definitely agree with what everybody's saying, not to echo the room. I, I murmured fuck earlier because Domo stole my point, so I'll pick a different rivalry, uh, like Phoenix, Minnesota, or really just any somewhat chippy rivalry in the semis or the first round that people be like, oh, yeah, we're back. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't had, like, th this feels like some L.A. and then the new version of the Clippers shit where they actually just don't fuck with each other. Except, to be honest, they have more history in uh, Boston and Miami because they've just – simply matched up consistently for like the past five years i think even um i'm definitely for it i'm not as much as i'm a laker fan that wants to dunk on a celtic i ain't got no problem with them talking shit that's why i'm like damn i need this to, i need this off season to hurry to fuck up so we can start talking basketball again because i talk shit too i mean i did so i'm not mad at uh anything boston's doing in regards to dunking on miami especially when Maybe, maybe I don't want to go into my hot take yet, but especially when that heat culture, we might gotta take a calm little revisit at that. Because in hindsight, damn, what, what, what? Dang, we gotta okay, right. we gotta revisit them. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I could specify what I'm saying now, but then I gotta come up with another hot take. No, 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 save it, save it. <laughs> I want to see. I'll say the only the only thing that I mean, it just feels forced. Now I understand what we're saying. This is the only real rivalry in the league. You know, we had Damo on here a couple months ago talking about Anthony Edwards and the Washington Wizards or some shit. Like, like nobody knows about what that is. Nobody. What? Who was it? What? Who was it? Just put it on him, man. Damn. It was Anthony. It was the. It was Anthony Edwards and who? I was. Say, I was saying that there are actually more storylines than Damo, credit who, for. What was the storyline, other... gang? What was I the storyline? I forget line? what it was months ago, Omar. I don't, I can't remember off the top oh, of my so head. So it's, it's <laughs> not week is over. It was Anthony Edwards. It's not week, the season's over, man. Like, Damn, I don't know. It was, it was, 
it was Anthony Edwards and the taco stand man from uh you know Detroit or some shit like that. Like it was it was a weak one. It was a weak one. Wasn't it Ant? So, for, someone in the chat said it wasn't it Ant versus Shay. No been versus the Wizards. Didn't, didn't Ant say it like was, he plays as against the Wizards? Like, yeah, it was the Wizards. It was an East Coast team for Shay sure. Had some back and forth. Mm. No, so I know I'm glad. Whenever they played the Thunder. Then someone in chat. What are you looking at chat at? Hmm? I got my phone on my hip. Like on my oh, okay, leg. Okay, I'm okay, good. Right. I'm good. You see how yeah, I'm not really yeah, it's yeah. in the peripheral, man. I'm still in the camera. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm like, okay, you just you making this up. Nonetheless, but yeah, this this feels like a real this feels like real beef, real sausage. You know, Grant Williams mm-hmm. is a bitch, even if he's not on Boston to this day. That's the way that they feel. And because Grant Williams is Jason Tatum's guy, you know, he's got to get back at Jimmy Butler for that. You know, I I, I get it. Miami um, been talking shit too, all right? Well, not not even my. It's really just Jimmy. I can't lie, because I think after they won Game Two against against us, like Jimmy Jimmy put up that uh, what you call it, that Instagram post of "Don't let us get one" with his face photoshopped on Jalen Brown. So, I mean, motherfuckers didn't find that corny. So, hey, it's just a fire back, man. I think Jimmy Butler's a dog, and maybe it's, that's it. I think Jason Tatum is man. He's 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 been on a clip hunting tour. You know, he's he's neon. He's Jack Doherty. You know, nah, I just that, I just crazy. You're not going to say nothing about that. That's, 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 that's crazy. crazy. I just don't. Hey, I just he has don't. been club hunting, man. I can't even deny it. <laughs> he's oh. nasty. It's been he so it. I'm so mad I'm defending hey, it's the It's not a deserve or not, bro. It's just Kobe. he's been clip hunting. I fuck with it. Honestly, I, I fuck with the clip hunting. I will clip hunt, too. I will, fu- I, I will clip hunt, too, if I got my victory. When I was getting my victory laps in, I will clip hunt, too. I just want was. him to quote himself. That That's night. the only thing. He's quoting everybody else. Stop it. That's what I'm saying. Say she's <laughs> not even trying to, uh, you know, come with some original. And even Brian Scalabrini tried to throw. Is it is it a easy easy flight, Jason? <laughs> like, come on, bro. Okay, all right. We'll get up out of here. Um, I'm gonna talk about some some trade rumors. Not some trade rumors, but some destination. Speaking of Jimmy Butler, reporting. This is from Howard Beck. Jimmy Butler will be traded. Rival executives have been buzzing about it for months for all the obvious reasons. Butler is about to turn 35 with a lot of hard miles and a lot of injuries. Um, We got to have the questions about, you know, Jimmy Butler, have that conversation. I want to kind of start it off with, though, we have this situation in this offseason where two marquee forwards are looking to be, you know, off their teams. Who would you rather have? Jimmy Butler or Paul George? Go. Depends on the situation, but I feel like for more teams, Jimmy Butler probably fits better. Or they need a Jimmy. I actually disagree. I was going to say, I guess peak talent for peak talent, you may be be able to argue a Paul. uh, Oh, my God. Fucking English. I think peak talent for peak talent right now, you might even be able to get away with arguing a Jimmy Butler because of inconsistency, inconsistencies in the playoffs versus, all right, yeah, he's just typically not that guy. Granted, he was not supposed to be a number one in Paul George. However, um, who fits better on most teams? Definitely Paul George for me. Um, I would definitely say Paul George fits on more teams, skill for skill. He's the more skilled player, so more teams would, you know, benefit from his play style. Jimmy Butler fits in a fi- in a finite amount of places he fits with a certain cast of people jimmy butler's that guy that just can't work with anybody he's like a kobe mentality like everybody just everybody couldn't play with kobe like certain people you just it it just ain't in you to play with kobe i think that's the same way with jimmy butler you need a certain type of wiring to play with jimmy butler because he is a he's a character so what are are these places that we're thinking of where pg fits better than jimmy because the number one place that i'm thinking of that both of them would be beneficial is is Philly. And I think they need uh, a Jimmy Butler more than Paul George. I think well, let me, well, let me let me well let me let me say this. Let me say this. I would actually even disagree with what Damo just said. Be- only because a lot of these people need some sort of leadership on their team. Uh and Philly was gonna be somebody that we brought up. But if we talk about the teams that are looking at adding these players. I think Philadelphia needs that leader, that dog, that whatever the case may be. We heard that Angel Reese clip from yesterday. I'm a dog. It's just, you know, it's just in me. Um, mm-hmm. I think Jimmy Butler would fit perfectly there. Uh, Indiana, I think that 
they need that as well. Like if we're having a conversation about him joining Indiana and damn near any other team that I could think of that would be in the hunt for like these types of players, I, Paul George even might be younger than Jimmy Butler. I, w- I really wouldn't care just because of the scary stuff Paul George has been saying in the offseason. Um, I need that dog as Jimmy Butler, man. I think he fits everywhere more, more Every- than Paul George does. Everybody doesn't react well to having a dog in their locker room. Um, I can understand from the outside looking in, you're saying, oh, well, it seems like they would need his leadership. That's fine. We've seen Jimmy Butler on the Sixers before, and it didn't work because of front office issues and coaching issues. Now, if you're saying that the coach that Nick Nurse, well, they have Nick Nurse now, so there won't be a coaching issue. I mean, cool. I didn't think it would have been a coaching issue with Rondo and Rick Carlisle when we see how that worked. So I, I, I just don't know. It's just that level of uncertainty. And because I've seen Jimmy Butler go to two destinations, the 76ers where it didn't work because of coaching in front office, and then Minnesota where it didn't work because of front office, ownership, coaching, and players on the team, I know that there are places where Jimmy could go and it just wouldn't pan out because of how Jimmy plays and how he wants to lead. He's He said it. When he went to Miami, this felt like home because they do things this way. Now, if you sit in there somewhere like Indiana, yeah, they do need a dog. That's why they got James Johnson because I don't know how Indiana practices. I don't know how Indiana prepares for games. And if they don't prepare how Jimmy prepares, Jimmy's not going to like it. And I don't care if Jimmy Butler – I feel like Jimmy's one of those people where if he's 30, 35, or 40, he's going to bring the same level of intensity and passion and leadership that he always going to have, whether he can produce like that or not. And some guys aren't going to – it's just going to rub some dudes the wrong way. We've seen it. But, yeah, but we knew those okay. things that you're saying, and I'm sorry, we knew those things that you were saying about this organization not being whatever. We knew that about Philly prior to Jimmy, and we knew that about Minnesota prior to uh, uh, Jimmy as well. So I, I would just say, based off of what we know, I st- I just don't see it. It would be more of a shock, and I would I would bank more on a shock than I already know. Like Cat is soft, uh, Wiggins is questionable. You know, all these things, and that's a dysfunctional head, like, you know, organization or whatever the case may be. That doesn't sound like the best place for Jimmy to go, as opposed to even Minnesota right now. Like, I think they're in a much better space right now, and a Jimmy Butler would work for sure there. For me, I think it's a matter of does X team need a leader, and does X team need a leader, whether it's on or off the court? For example, and hypo- this is completely hypothetical, but like a Thunder or a Nuggets, a Mavericks, um, even like a L.A., for example, I don't think they need a Jimmy Butler in there. I think all four of those teams would greatly, like, absurdly benefit with a Paul George in terms of skill set, in terms of personality in the locker room. He's not going to try to head honcho it up. He's not going to try to change what you got going on, turn it. I know it's heat culture, but, like, I'm not saying heat culture is Jimmy Butler culture, but Jimmy Butler plays a huge fucking factor into it. So I don't think I don't think that he's going to try to change things up there. And then also when we're talking about them just as individual talents, I mean – Hey, Jimmy Butler has shown to rise to the occasion time in and time out more than Paul George, at least. But we haven't seen Paul George in quite some time be that number two. And I I think it's very fair to say Paul George as a number two is way more complimentary to a lot of superstars in this league than Jimmy Butler as a number two is, in my personal opinion. I think a lot of these teams that are looking at Jimmy or Paul George, I don't even think we need to go to the leadership point, which are which is a valid point. I just think a lot of these teams would much benefit from a better on-ball playmaker than a better shooter. Because I think that's that's Paul George's difference between Jimmy Butler is the shooting. I think that aspect of it is more replaceable on these other teams. But having a guy that can uh, be, one of, be one of the top-tier on-ball playmakers in the league and still be one of the better defenders in the league, um, his shooting woes is going to be something that you deal with, but... On-ball playmaking is one of the most, like, invaluable uh, attributes in the league right now. So, like, even in Philly, you would have to probably move Tyrese Maxey more off-ball with Jimmy Butler there. But I would like to see their system with Jimmy Butler being on the ball a little bit more. Joel Embiid posting up and Tyrese Maxey being, like, a not a Ray Allen, but, like, a, you know, a, a off the off-the-catch guy more. I also think a weird argument to make, but just an argument I'm going to present. I think Paul George's game is going to age better. Not not the player may not still be better, but like if I had to be, actually let me take that back cuz I think Paul George, a uh, old 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 version of Paul George might end up being a little better. But I think in terms of being a defender, turn maybe just shooter, I think that's going to age more than what Jimmy Butler demands. Now, Jimmy Butler just might say fuck it whenever he doesn't have that same first step and retire before Paul George does, but I think 
if we're really, really, really about to get weird and technical with it, when we offer these contracts four years down the line, I think Paul George might be more serviceable just because of what he's good at compared to what Jimmy is good at.